Here was a chance to solve one of the world's biggest problems, the rapidly growing carbon emissions from transportation, while allowing faster travel than ever. Hyperloop offered a way to move people and goods in less time than a plane, with the convenience of a train, and with potentially zero carbon emissions. If we can bring airplane speeds to the ground sustainably and safely, what Hyperloop does would be a real benefit to society. The engineering challenges are immense, and it will be many years before a paying passenger steps on the first Hyperloop, but the rewards could be enormous. One study suggests a nationwide Hyperloop could boost America's GDP alone by $200 billion. The race had begun to prove this transformational technology was even possible. The first company off the blocks was Hyperloop TT. Two weeks after the white paper was launched, we put out a call to action for engineers around the world, and we had this overwhelming response of not just anybody, of engineers and, and, and technologists that had already done amazing things. Everything from the CERN Large Hadron Collider to the Manhattan Project. So it was this incredible team, but we chose 100 engineers to work on this, work on the feasibility to see if the Hyperloop, this Hyperloop thing, was actually possible. The conclusion was that this is not only feasible, but it can be done with technology that exists today. The company set out to design and construct a revolutionary new transportation system. As well as the tube, they've built a prototype capsule that can carry up to 50 passengers. But for a Hyperloop pod like this to reach ultra high speeds, they need to address the factors that slow down other kinds of vehicles. Drag from air resistance and friction caused by contact between wheels and the ground. The team's first challenge was to eliminate friction. Floating trains called maglev already exist in China and Japan, but their powerful electromagnets require a huge amount of electricity, making them fast but expensive and energy intensive to operate. So Hyperloop TT are developing a next-generation maglev that can levitate without the need for any extra power at all. The secret sauce of, of our passive magnetic levitation system is a, is a hallback array. And what a hallback array is, is a series of permanent magnets arranged in a certain way, almost like a, a cheat code on a video game, up, down, left, right, left, right. Uh, if you arrange it a certain way, you get a enhanced and directed magnetic field. When a holdback array moves over an aluminum track, the strong magnetic field induces electrical currents inside the metal. And that turns the track temporarily into an opposing magnet. The repulsive force lifts the magnets up by over an inch, along with the capsule. The team have also installed vacuum pumps to remove 99.9% .9 of the air inside the tube reducing air resistance to almost nothing. Together with the levitation, Hyperloop TT believe this will allow them to reach speeds of up to 760 miles per hour. And the Hyperloop will not only be fast, but extremely efficient. You almost completely reduce friction, you almost completely reduce drag. So once you're up to speed, you'll still be traveling without any energy use. It's, for us, it's as close to perpetual motion as you can get. The US Department for Transportation estimates that Hyperloop routes could be up to six times more energy efficient than aircraft on short routes. That means a much smaller carbon footprint, and the power it does use can be clean and green. We're fully electric and we're fully emissions-free, so building a propulsion system it's a must that, that, the, that the capsule be all electric, and our system is that today. Hyperloop TT are still preparing to demonstrate their system in France. But thousands of miles away, Hyperloop pods have been flying through a tube for some time. Two years after his white paper, Elon Musk had a scaled-down Hyperloop track built at SpaceX HQ in California. Six feet wide and three quarters of a mile long. Then he put on a contest for students to design, build, and race the best miniature pod. 
What this is really intended to do is to encourage uh, innovation in, in transport technology. And I think we'll find that it's way more incredible than we ever realized. And then later today, we'll see how fast the pods can go. So congrats to everyone. Um, amazed at what the student teams have done. Uh, really just blown my mind and may the best team win. Yeah. Over a thousand teams entered with 30 finalists selected for the competition weekend. One of them was from the University of Delft in the Netherlands, including mechanical engineering student Tim Houter. When we got to hear about the concept, we already thought that it was something that could completely change the world in terms of mobility, but also in terms of sustainability. And that we also really like engineering challenges. So when the competition came along, we didn't have to think long in order to also set up a team. And it was a really intense period uh, because you need to achieve very high technical standards in a really short amount of time. So together with that whole team, it was basically 20% of the work where some people also continued to work during the nights to make sure that we met our deadlines and that we could unveil our, our high to prototype on time. The different categories that we could score points for were the efficiency of your vehicle, the safety, the cost, but also the speed that you were able to achieve. And we took all those criteria into account and designed a vehicle that would have the highest overall score on the combination of all these aspects. The team finally unveiled their design in June 2016. One of the dummy passengers, we called him Elon. We're referring to Elon Musk, of course. Once in California, the teams had to pass a series of challenges to qualify for the last stage. Operating in a vacuum, being propelled along an open air track, and moving through the tube at normal pressure. Only if you have passed those tests, you were allowed to proceed towards the, uh, the final test run that would then eventually determine the, the winner of the iFloop competition. Only three teams qualified for the final run in the depressurized tube. When we had the confirmation that we were one of those, that's of course an amazing feeling and only makes you more excited to you know, really give it as much as you can for that final run and go for the win. Everything was set, but as the team carried out the last checks, there was an unexpected issue. When we were almost ready, uh, we actually noticed a malfunction of the braking system. And that was quite a, uh, quite a terrifying moment uh, because your braking system needs to work, of course, uh, before you can do your, your final run. They hurried into the tube to investigate. So you cannot wait too long before you do your run. Otherwise, you need to yeah, get out of the tube and make room for another team. So the pressure was really on to have it fixed. After a few minutes, they figured out the problem. Luckily, we got it fixed while it was standing there, but it was quite, a, um, yeah, <laughs> quite an exciting moment. The speed to beat was 94 kilometers per hour, or 58 miles per hour, clocked earlier by Team War from Germany. Nowhere near as fast as Elon Musk had in mind for a future Hyperloop, but still a challenge in a short vacuum tube. We're going to start the countdown right now. They said that they're basically ready, and uh, we're excited to see how it goes. Five, four, three, two, one. There is this very sort of tense moment, but then you see that everything is going smoothly and vehicles getting up to speed in the way that it should. Delft Hyperloop had matched the fastest speed. They also scored highly in other categories, from design to safety. The team with the highest score, the sum of all of the other categories, and that, that's Delft. Yeah! And it was really amazing. Everybody was extremely in excitement and, and cheering and, and hugging each other. It was, it was really, really great. Team Delft were world Hyperloop champions. Some of the team decided to take the next step to launch a company and develop a full Hyperloop system with a new pod and a new track.